In life, there are red flags all around us, like this one. Come in, come in, I hope you don't mind dogs. I've got a couple of dogs. Oh, I'm more of a cat person, actually. I don't really like dogs. And this one? Want some coffee? Mmm, I don't drink coffee. What about this one? Ooh, lovely cup of tea. And even this one. You okay with sausages for dinner? No thanks, I'm a vegan. You get the picture. But if there are red flags in life, then there are definitely red flags in running signs and signals that you should see or at least be aware of to make sure you keep your running on track and steer yourself clear of injury. So we put together the eight red flags that runners should know, but probably don't. Maybe one of the hardest red flags to gauge is stiffness. Because you might think stiffness, that's just part and parcel of running, and, and to a certain extent it is. But it's about getting to know your body because there are types of stiffness in your legs that definitely you don't want. Because a general rule of thumb I go with is when running a stiffness in your legs that you ignore turns into a soreness, and then a soreness that you maybe ignore, that turns into an injury. So what's one of the first steps we use when we get some stiffness in the legs? That one's easy. I try and unstiffness it. So grid foam roller or self-massage or massage or massage gun. Lots of work on the legs to try and get rid of that stiffness before it becomes soreness. But if the stiffness persists and it starts turning into soreness, then my next steps are I just monitor it and I have a rule that if the pain is over three out of 10, that's when I stop and that's when I seek help. And if it's under three out of 10, then sadly, sometimes some kind of pain is just part and parcel of hard training. So, but it's about learning about your body and just making sure you make the right decisions for you. But absolutely what I don't do at any point is ignore it because it is a big red flag. And one of the most scientific methods of seeing a red flag is finding out what your HRV is. And very simply put, HRV is heart rate variability, which is actually the difference in time between each beat of your heart. And the rule of thumb is the more variable it is, the more relaxed it is, which means you're not stressed. So sometimes it'll be 1.1 seconds between beats, sometimes 0.9 and it'll change. When you're stressed, it's more regulated. And there are plenty of ways of finding out what your heart rate variability is. The method I use is an app on my phone, but as simply, you could use your watch. Some people have an aura ring, some people have a whoop band. And it's a way of telling you just how stressed you are and what is good about the app is that it recommends what your training should look like for that day. So my app, which is HRV for training, uses the torch on the back of my phone to then check my pulse and therefore give me my heart rate variability and then if it detects I'm stressed it recommends that I either dial back my training for that day or I consider not training at all and the evidence is very clear that those people who follow the recommendation make way more progress than those who ignore it and train on regardless so think of it as a scientific guardian against life stress to make sure you get the most out of training and that's one red flag easily avoided something to be aware of a red flag could be that you're overtired, you're too tired to get up and train, or that you're just lacking in motivation to train. And to be honest, we're feeling both of those things right now ourselves. So this feeling could be a sign that you're overtraining. It could be a sign that the other stresses in your life are too high. It could be a sign that you need a break, or it could just be that you are tired from training, which is a natural part of the process. So. Really, you need to build up your bank of experience, get to know your body, and work out which one of those it is so that you can navigate it, work through it, work around it, and get yourself back on track. One thing that will help you is building yourself as the kind of runner that doesn't need motivation. You build effective habits that help you be disciplined and act through discipline, getting up, getting out to do your runs. I won't go into too much detail because there's a whole separate video on that, which we'll link here. And I would say a big red flag, particularly with couples, is that you can start to get irritated by things that the other person does or things that even you do to yourself. And hopefully you can see by watching the channel that Mary and I get on pretty well almost all of the time. However, what we've learned in the process of our relationship is that sometimes 
things start to annoy us about each other and it tends to coincide with when we're training hard or work stress is, is getting on top of us. And the way that we've combated this is, I think really that we just understand it, that we know because we get on almost all of the time, the times that we are getting irritated by each other are the times we most have to take a step back and be more understanding. Just the knowing means you can step back and take a pause and then approach it in the right way because we know we don't actually annoy each other, we don't actually aggravate each other, it's the training that makes us more irritated generally. Do you ever have that feeling in training that there's a kind of invisible ceiling to your pace or your effort like you're working hard but your body's put a limit on how hard you can work it won't let you push a pace or even a heart rate and even more frustratingly it can happen in races too you just feel like you can't push to where you usually would this is a big red flag just as a car has a mechanism to protect itself from catastrophic failure that they call limp mode, as in it can only travel at 20 miles an hour, your body's got similar systems in place. If those feelings happen to you in training or racing, then don't be frustrated and don't be downhearted. It's your body's way of protecting you and saying, hey, let's take a breather here, something's not right. So listening and learning about when to push and when to recover is very much a key part of your running process as well. A really big indicator or red flag for me is loss of appetite. Here's the thing, for me, when I'm training, I'm hungry all of the time. So a loss of appetite usually tells me something. But you have to pay close attention because there's so many things that could cause lack of appetite, particularly for Mary and I living in a really hot country. Did you know that just being hot suppresses the appetite? Interesting fact, that's why you're always hungry when you get out of the swimming pool because your core temperature has kept down. But you have to look beyond those surface signals, like those are the obvious ones. So if I'm not hungry, even when I'm training hard, usually I've got to try and work out why? Because it tends to be a signal that your body is in a depressed state somehow, and I don't mean psychologically, although of course that can cause lack of appetite, but in some way, immune system, something is going on inside here that is causing that lack of appetite. And in the case of runners, it's often overtraining. As simple as that, it's often overdoing it, leads to a depressed state in some way physically, and then you just don't have that appetite. So if I'm training hard, but I have a lack of hunger, for me, big red flag, stop, sort it out. Then you can train, then you can eat. Okay, one big red flag that you need to be aware of is that when you're tired, maybe you've overtrained, you've got a lot of life stress going on, your body does deteriorate and you can get ill or run down pretty quickly. This can be quite individual. For me, last week I noticed the beginnings of a cold sore. Luckily, I spotted it quickly and managed to contain it. I also lose eyelashes when I'm stressed and run down, but it could be something different for you. So what you need to do is really be in tune and be aware of your body and try when you feel that you're getting run down, you're noticing these signals, these red flags, treat them as best as you can, get some extra rest, really look after yourself and be kind to yourself, dial back your training a little bit to let your body catch up and get back in sync. Just remember to look after yourself. You need to let your body recover, so don't push through the hard times. One red flag I've had a few times lately is a difference in my resting or my working heart rate. So I would say the more you run, the more you get to know what your heart rate does at certain paces and in certain conditions. And a big red flag is when your heart rate is not doing what you expect it to do, either it's too high or too low for a certain effort or a certain pace that you would usually run. So I'll give you an example, both when we had COVID and when we flew home to the UK this summer. When we were running at a similar pace we would normally run, our heart rates were 10 beats per minute or more above where they should be. And that's usually an indication of something going on internally that you've got to be aware of, either kind of recovery and repair or something else. There might still be something lingering. And although this one hasn't happened to me, I've read lots of articles and stories about athletes who have had their heart rate almost limited while they're out exercising. They can't push it beyond a certain point. And again, that's the body's way of protecting you if you push too hard, you're definitely going to go over the edge and go into an illness. So it limits where your heart rate is. So if you're pushing a certain pace and your heart rate just can't climb in a session, then again, that might be a red flag. That might be something telling you you need to back off. So basically I'm saying 
you've got to kind of get familiar with what your heart does in certain situations and then when it doesn't do what you think it's going to do there you go that's a signal and if you found value in this video then consider subscribing but never a hard sell and if you liked the video then you're definitely going to like this one which was the 10 diet myths that runners should know but probably don't see you on wednesday race video